Join us now for an insight with Carl Summer. The story no one will ever know came about from an interesting event that happened to me while sitting in a college class. The teacher began telling the story about Papa and Mama Squirrel and their children. The children wanted to disobey their parents by planning to climb out of the tree house during the night. When the time came, they quietly opened the window and began to climb out. Then the teacher said, oh, you don't want to hear this. Here we were, grown students, and the class groaned. They wanted to hear the rest of the story. A light dawned on me that day. Tell a story, even the children's one, interesting enough, and adults would even want to listen. The teacher didn't continue the story, but that story never left my mind. So here I am, from that little beginning, writing this picture book that shows how children often get into all sorts of trouble simply because they think they're smarter than their parents. I'm a firm believer in children learning to trust and listen to their parents. Children don't realize that we as parents were once just their age, and we can still remember things that happened to us. So as loving parents, we want to protect them by giving them rules for their benefit. The story begins with a happy group of squirrels playing, and they meet these older squirrels who show them these giant acorns that they gathered from Mr. Smith's farms, but their parents told their younger squirrels they shouldn't go there. When little Johnny moans, we can't go there, the older squirrel says, why not? No one will ever know. Then one of the older squirrels taunts Johnny about how he should stay in his own little yard and eat his tiny little acorns. Peer pressure is a major problem with children. What is everyone doing? Let's follow the crowd. How many problems children get into by following their friends instead of following their parents? It takes courage to stand up for what's right when everyone around you is encouraging to do what's wrong. This is where teachers and parents can have a powerful influence on children, teaching them to stand up for what's right when others want to do what's wrong. I taught a large Sunday school class at the church I attended. Periodically, we would gather together for food and fellowship. At one event, my daughter in her 20s happened to be there. Someone asked her, didn't you experience peer pressure when you were growing up? I'll never forget what my daughter did. She pointed her finger straight at me and said, he was my peer pressure. In other words, throughout her childhood, she was concerned about what I would do. To me, that's good. I'm a firm believer in fair, firm, and loving discipline. I love all my children, but if they got out of line, I was there to correct them. Either we train our children properly, or society will train them. Society's methods are not forgiving when children get older. If they steal, they'll lock them up. If they hit someone with a bat, they'll go to jail. I could go on and on with all sorts of rules that society has in order to keep us safe. Wise are those parents who train their children to obey. The problem with children is that they lack foresight. They don't realize the many dangers that can come from their bad decisions. For Johnny and Janie and their friends, all they could see was having a feast and lots of fun. But there's a big bad wolf out there, and that's why we as parents need to protect our children and give them proper guidelines. Another problem children have is lying. Unfortunately, a problem many parents have is they also lie. If your children hear you say something when you don't want to speak to someone on the phone, tell them I'm not here, what message are you sending to your children? Lying is okay. Then once you become known as a liar, how can you ever be trusted? One of the most important principles for successful child training is that we must be the model, the behavior that we want our children to become. It's useless to tell our children not to lie if they see us lie. You know there's that adage, our actions speak so loud that we can't hear what you're saying. In this story, I have the wolf bite off Johnny's tail. I battle over this plot point. Should I have been more humane and maybe have the wolf just strip the hair from Johnny's tail and let it grow back again? But what message would that send to children? Let's face the honest facts. Some decisions that children make 
may cause them to suffer the rest of their lives. Tails don't always grow back, and sometimes it's not about losing a tail, but losing a life. In the DVD, I mentioned smoking, marijuana, and drugs, sniffing glue, taking unnecessary pills, and anything that hurts the body. And more extensive details about the dangers of smoking tobacco can be found in the activity lesson on the website. Beginning these bad habits can lead children to a downward spiral that can destroy their entire lives. I didn't mention premarital sex, but parents, I urge you, speak to your children about this important subject. If you don't, your children will learn it, but they'll learn the wrong things about it. Teach them about your values. Our society is inundated with immorality. Multitudes of children will suffer because of society's message of recreational sex. You may call me old-fashioned, but I'm a strong believer that sex belongs only in marriage. How many problems children would avoid in life if they would practice this? Look at the millions of people today infected with sexually transmitted diseases, and some of them are incurable. For the rest of their lives, they have to deal with that problem. Parents hold up high moral values, even while mom bandages tail. Johnny still didn't quite catch on. He's still thinking, oh, if only I had run faster, this never would have happened. His dad wisely points out Johnny's wrong thinking. He lets him know the problem is not about how fast he ran, but rather the fact that if he had listened in the first place, it never would have happened. That's my strong message to children. If they would learn to listen and obey their parents, they would avoid many problems in life. In closing, the story ends on a happy note. From then on, Johnny listened to dad and mom, and in spite of his short tail, he became a very happy squirrel. And most of all, he was glad to learn to disobey is wrong even when you think no one will ever know.